mailbag time. I've got a few things here. This will be a review item, I'm pretty sure. Let's get stuck into it. See what's in here. Don't forget to click like and subscribe if you've not been here before. Help support the channel. Say little thing to do, but it helps. Oh, wow. These actually arrive really quickly. So the other day I did a video showing me repairing a power supply. And I think it was Friday's video actually. So I'm going to reduce this one but tomorrow. So, and I bought some more power supplies. Hmm. These are supposed to be 2.5 amp rated. Feels awfully light. I'm tempted to smack that open and have a look actually. Oh, what do you reckon? Should I smack it open? doesn't feel like there's much in it. Two and a half amps. Mm, I should just load test it. Let's load test it. Right, so I've got the power supply plugged in. Um, as you can see, we're getting 5.4 volts and no loading on it. So let's just set the current to say 100 milliamps. We'll start off quite low. And we'll turn the load on and we'll see how it handles stuff. 100 milliamps, no issue. As you'd expect, it's supposed to be two and a half amps. So we'll wind this up some more. Half an amp, still above five volts. Can't remember what the actual spec is, I think 5.4 volts is probably a bit high. Anyway, one amp, still in almost five volts there. there we go, one and a half amps, stripping down a bit there. Two amps. Now I will be getting losses through my cabling because I've only got really thin wires on that plug and that stuff. So the actual adapter I'm using to go from these cables to the micro USB is only quite small. So um, that will have an influence. It will be causing a bigger voltage drop. But we could do in two amps right now and it's handling it. Okay, let's go a bit more. 2.5 amps. Still doing kind of okay. Three amps even. It's working too much but you know. So yeah, I think it'll actually be alright. Um, although it feels quite light. So if you've got one amp loading on it, you're going to be getting constantly 5 volts, which is pretty good. But I'm not sure about this whole maximum voltage being about 5.4 volts. I mean, 10% high, getting towards 10% high. If you've got no loading, yeah, it's pretty much zero. But yes. Yeah, I think it's pushing a little bit. I think it's like 5.2, was it, the max normally? I had to look this up. So I just did a bit of a quick search on Google, you know, Googling away. And the voltage specs are variable depending on the, the aging. So it used to be 5.25 volts used to be the max until about 2014. After 2014, 5.5 volts is the maximum rating. So I don't know why I decided to up it like that. I don't know, maybe it's to do with current drawers that are expected or something. I don't know, but... So 5.5 volts is the maximum past 2014 for any spec, so I suppose it's okay. I mean, 5.25 is the original spec, but yeah, it's within the current spec, I suppose, so that's a good one. So that little power supply, that doesn't weigh much. It seemed to be okay, although I haven't checked noise. I should have checked noise on it too. But unfortunately, my wire just broke off the connector again. So, because this is my test jig. It's just the micro USB, the wire soldered on and the other leg broke off again. So, there's a second thing that's happened to now. But I've got some adapters coming. I've actually got some probably micro USB to header pin adapters coming. Got some from China. And I also got a guy which is sending me some too, because apparently he's making them. And he recently contacted me and he's going to send me some samples. So, watch out for those coming up in the near future. It's a cable time bag. I'm guessing it's got a cable on it. Oh, that's a bit bad. No. Oh, it's a cut with something bad. Ah, oh, right, it's a HDMI. It's the DisplayPort or slash Thunderbolt port to HDMI adapter. Because I do have one here somewhere, but I've always been suspicious about it because I've, I've used it once, and the MacBook I was using it on, which was faulty, had issues with the mux blowing up for the video output. I had to replace it once, and I thought, hmm, okay, so I replaced it again, it blew again. So what 
I wasn't sure about whether it's the cable I was using or whether I just got really unlucky with that particular machine because that's doubt's always been in my mind about maybe the cable's bad. I've done testing on the cable, like measured across the pen stuff like check for any shorts and there's no obvious problems with the cable. I've got another one, just to be sure. Now this one here looks like I've very nearly got an empty bag because there's a hole in it already, look. And the thing that's in it has obviously been poking out of that hole. It looks like it didn't quite come all the way out. It was very close to being an empty bag when it arrived. That would have been disappointing. Anyway, this is a remote control which will supposedly work with an Apple TV. Yep, no batteries, that's fine. So, the reason I've got this is that I fished out. Let's get this, dig it out from underneath my junk. I've got sitting here, which are, all these projects I've got half done. Um, I fished out this Apple TV and repaired it and it seems to be working the only problem is I don't have a remote control for it so I rescued this thing from a dumpster as it were the old Dave trick it's actually from a trailer of rubbish but you know never mind it was actually full of water it's soaking wet so I pulled it apart dried it all out repaired it and that is working and I wanted a remote control to try it out so this was relatively cheap to get so I thought I'd get one and try see if I can actually use this thing. I mean, it's an older one. Um, I can't which actual model version was. Was it version three? Was it? I can't remember now. But um, fortunately, it's a bit scuffed up and stuff from being in rubbish. You know, it's a bit of a shame. But if it's functional, it might be a handy thing to have. I might better use that in a motorhome or something instead to use for internet TV. Maybe I'll do that. I don't know. But I thought, wow, what the hell? I'll get a remote. Give we go. We'll get to the review item shortly. We'll have a quick look at that. Let's get in here first. I know you can't see what I'm doing, but not too exciting this is, not too exciting at all. So. It's one of them. So I've got a secure light outside which is failing, the actual Fresnel lens is cranked, the UV over here is quite harsh and it tends to destroy these lenses. Now I'd actually buy some lenses oh, about a year ago now, but what I found though is that they tend to be the wrong dimensions for these bloody lamps, so unfortunately now the problem is actually, the, the original lenses tend to be welded in or glued in, you can't really get them out very easily or replace them. So although I've got lenses, I can't really do it very easily. I might have a go at it and um, do a video on it maybe, but for the time being I'll just bought another lamp. So these are LED lamps, and this particular one I found works quite well. You can see this is all sealed in around here, it's actually silicon in this one, might be repairable later on, I don't know, but so these are LED ones, and this actually comes as a DIY kit, you just have to plug it in. I'm not sure how you're supposed to get the plug through the wall, but uh, anyway, <clears throat> no one asked that question, did they? But it's a DIY kit, and the reason I've got this, because, well, it's only a few dollars more to get this one with the cable on it, than it is to buy one without the cable. What I find handy sometimes is having these kinds of cables laying around. What ratings have got on here? 2 by 2 by 075 mil. So it's only two core. Obviously there's no earth pin, so that gave away anyway. 0.75 mil standard kind of size, so plug is rated for 10 amps, of course. So this cable could be handy for something in itself. I could use that for some equipment or do some repairs or something else. So that will come off, and this will just basically replace the existing lights. I'll take the existing light down, replace it with this one, and maybe I'll repair the other one and keep it as a spare. We'll see. But um, not too exciting, but I found this particular light is quite good. Now these ones use LEDs. I've already replaced a couple of lights with these particular one. And they actually work quite well. They, they get much fewer false alarms and stuff as well, and they're quite controllable because you've got uh, sensitivity settings on them as well at the bottom there. Not all lamps have got that. LED bulbs. Now these aren't super bright. I mean, they're okay. They're not as good as a, as a halogen lamp. If you have issues where lights where might be on for long periods of time, you know, like where I am, I get a lot of power surges. And what will happen is, when I get power surges, the lights will come on, stay on for a period of time. Although these ones seem to be less of a problem. Um, they tend to self-reset. But the other types I've had don't self-reset, and they're a bit of a problem because you end up with a, your security light on. It could be on for a couple of days before you notice, oh, my light's on. You know, if you've been away for a little while or something, you know. So... LED lamps, saving a lot of power, doesn't generate as much heat. Not generating heat also means you've got less heat in the area of this sensing, 
less heat around here means less force triggering, more bonuses. So it's a good light. Right, last thing. Let's see what's in here. Don't forget to click like and subscribe. And also consider supporting me on Patreon if you feel so inclined. If you think I'm valuable in what I'm doing, then help support the channel. Give me some more financing, help to buy things. So this is the Kowitz Smart Digital Multimeter, the KM601. I've seen this reviewed recently by some other YouTubers as well, so it seems that like Kowitz are pushing this model out currently at the moment. So lots of people will be doing views on this. My view is going to be slightly different, so watch out for that view. It's going to be coming maybe this week, I think, actually. I'll probably get it done this week. So watch out if it might be tomorrow or Wednesday or something like that, maybe even Friday, it depends what I'm doing. This will be reviewed and released very shortly, once I've actually had a look at it, obviously. But my take is going to be a little bit different to what the other YouTubers have been doing. So we've got some batteries came with it. Got an instruction manual there. Nice semi-hard case, that's quite nice. So like I said, I'll be doing a proper review on this thing, and my view is going to be digging into it a bit more. So I'm going to put this up to my calibration equipment, and I'm going to really put it through its paces. I'm going to really test its accuracy. I'm going to use my Datron calibrator. I'm going to check resistance, voltage, AC, frequency, um, capacitance. I've got some standard capacitors here I can use as well to check the actual capacitor accuracy too. So I'm going to do quite a lot of testing on this thing and actually give good results so I also intend to do some further videos later on comparing different budget multimeters as well I arranged for a few multimeters I should say I'm gonna do some comparisons as well just do some budget multimeter shootouts as it were so for now I've got this thing it looks pretty nice so we should really just quickly power this thing up and have a look so I'll do it now quite a stiff PVC bumper case Yeah, 70 PVC. Fortunately, it's not a captive screw, which means you might lose it if you're not careful. Cruise blow batteries. No, it's just the fuses. Fuses, I believe, from what I saw in the other reviews, are just down there somewhere, about there, I think. We'll look at that in the review anyway. We'll look in more detail. But for the time being, let's get this thing. Powered up. If I can get the things at the wrapping. Hey, it's just powered up. It's been beeped, so doing something. So it is a threaded insert, which is nice. Just a shame it's not a captive screw. I prefer captive screws because then you don't lose them. There you go. So the splay angle is quite interesting. Like straight on, it's actually looking a bit dull, and upwards it actually disappears. But downwards, it's actually looking really good. It's optimised for being below the meter. So when the meter's on your bench, often you're looking at this kind of angle at it, right? Because it's laying flat. There's no tilting stand on this thing. It's just a lays flat. That's actually looking really good. So it's optimised for the angle. So they've actually thought about that. I mean, probably if I get this camera angle right, I don't know if I can get it on camera or not. Can you see the Can you see it tipping out there? See, there you go. So I'd say... The angle there is a bit optimal for this camera view, right? So this angle here. So that's probably 45 degrees. It's optimised for. Now those standard jack spacings, that's the next question. Let's find out. Here's one of my standardised leads. Oh, look at that. He won't. It's not standardised spacing. Fail number one. But then you've got to try and fit all these connections across the bottom of this meter, so it's not surprising they are slightly close together. I am speaking fussy, but unfortunately it means I can't use my precision leads. I'd have to bodge something together. Hmm. Just have a quick play with this and see what's going on, eh? Just uh, give it a quick try out. So I've got Ian Johnson's PDVS2 Mini here, which is a 10 volt, well up to 10 volt precision reference. The position of this is way more than this thing will have, so it's a good little test for it. And we'll just do a bit of a sneak peek and see what it's actually like. And it's then gone to continuity mode. There we go, do voltage instead. Now it's on voltage range, so no, it's continuous. So this does this auto mode setting thing, which can be convenient. 
Let's see if we can find out where the limit is where it actually notices the voltage. So one millivolt, it still thinks that's a continuity range. It thinks it's resistance right now. <laughs> Still thinks it's resistance. Interesting. Okay, change the voltage about half a volt. That's curious. So the auto modes are quite interesting. Something you have to watch out for is making sure it's actually in the right range or in the right mode. I've confused it now. Half a volt didn't like that. So 600. Anyway, let's do some proper voltage. Oh, um, let's do this. Let's do 5 volts. That's slightly down there. Actually, what's the ranges on this thing? 10,000 count, looks like. So 10 volts is down a little bit. Mm. So we'll check this out more accurately with high voltages and all sorts of stuff. And I did a review video, but. Uh, Let's do a manual voltage and see what we can get down to on this. Let's do 1 millivolt. Doesn't register. 5, maybe. 5 millivolts is showing. It's 4. So it's not great for really low levels. You know, it's only you've got 1 millivolt resolution. The accuracy is obviously playing a part there. We'll have a good play with this. Okay, it's going to be a lot of fun. So thanks a lot, Kai, for sending this through to me. And um, there'll be links down below for this in the mailbag and also. In the review video too, I'll put links down below for that as well. Um, I think I'll links for it. I have to check actually. So make sure you check those out and check out the video, definitely. Check out the review video on this thing. Don't forget to click like and subscribe. Thanks to my Patreon and YouTube supporters and everyone that helps support the channel and everyone that gives me a thumbs up because it helps the channel. Everyone that subscribes, it helps the channel. Everyone that comments down below. Have a chat down below about these things if you want. That helps the channel too. All kinds of activity on the channel helps the channel. That's the way YouTube works. I'm waffling enough, aren't I? Check it out with you. Bye. Some batteries come in it. And actually do some real accuracy tests. And I really put it to its places. Ah! My wife texted me.